Hello everyone, I am Ritesh Ranjanjha and welcome you on my channel MacRights. Today I am going to explain Stodola method. So first of all we have to know what is Stodola method. It is used to finding the natural frequency of multi-degree freedom system or several degree freedom system. It is one type of iteration method and it has basically five steps. So let's start with the steps of Stodola method. So what is the Stodola method? It is used for finding the used for finding the natural frequency finding the natural frequency and it is iteration method. It has basically how much steps? It has five steps. Let's start with the first step. In the step one, step first. In the first step, we will assume that the deflection of the multi-degree freedom system is. Uh, one. So let's start. So here we will assume that the deflection curve, let deflection curve for multi degree freedom system. And here we are selecting the three multi-degree system. So I will write here three multi-degree freedom system. Y1 equal to 1, Y2 equal to 2, 1, and Y3 equal to also 1. It is our first iteration. We were just assuming it. Okay? Now step number two. In the first step, what will we do? We will assume that y1, y2, y3, phi psi equal to 1. In the step number second, in the step number second, we will find the inertia force. So we know that, we know that f1 equal to m1 omega square y1 instead of radius we will put here deflection y1 since y1 equal to 1 that's why I will write here m1 omega square similarly f2 will be m2 omega square y2 its a value will be m2 omega square and f3 equal to m3 omega square y3 and its a value will be m2 omega square Multiply by 1, same. So, no need to write the multiply by 1. It's the equation number 2, iteration first. Step first was the equation number 1. It means y1 equal to y2 equal to y3 equal to 1. It is your equation number 1. Now, come to the third step. In the first, third step, again we will find the value of why with the help of this iteration? Third step. In the step number third, we will we know that y1 equal to f1 a11 plus f2 a12 plus f3 a13. Where a11 one or a12 or a13 is what? It is your influence coefficient. Similarly, y2 equal to, here I will write here, thus, y2 thus. It is your f2 a21 plus f1 equal to a21, f2 equal to a22, f3 a22. Similarly, y3 dash will be f1 a31 plus f2 a32 plus f3 a it is your equation number 3. Now come to the next step that is your equation uh, step number 4. Now what will happen? If the y will be equal
equal to y dash or y will be not equal to y dash in the fourth state we will check that y1 is equal to y1 dash or not if it is equal to this or about to say in that case we will do what we will put the value of this y1 dash y2 dash and y3 dash in the equation number in the step number 4 we will check what step number 4 if y1 is equal to y1 dash or you will see, y2 will be y2 dash y3 will be y3 dash in that case we will do what we, we have to find your what natural frequency value of natural frequency in that case we will put value of y1 dash y2 dash and y3 dash in equation number 2 to find what omega square and after the five, getting the value of omega square we will do what we will take the root let us we know that f1 equal to what m1 omega square and we know that f1 equal to what here f1 to find the value of f1 we have done what y1 dash equal to f1 a11 plus f2 a22 plus f3 a33 but f1 equal to this so if i will write that putting the value of this in the equation we can find the value of omega square similarly we will do what we will do again if it is not equal to y dash then again we will do the same thing we will repeat the equation again and again and that is the actual iteration in the equation number 4 uh, step number 3 we will do what in the step number 3 ok it was the 4 now 5 initial was the 5 if y1 not equal to y1 dash ok in that case we will repeat the iteration again and at how much time just the t it will be not about to the value of previous iteration we will repeat it so it is the final if y1 not equal to y1 dash y2 not equal to y2 dash similarly y3 not equal to y3 dash then we will repeat we will repeat the repeat the iteration and how much time just that key it will be not close to the previous iteration and every time when suppose we got the y1 dash again uh, then uh, it is closer to y1 then i will put the value of y1 dash suppose it is not equal to y1 then we will do the next iteration and this time for the y1 instead of y1 we will select y1 dash again i will take the iteration and let us suppose that it is not equal to the previous one or about to equal to previous one then again we will do the same thing what will we do suppose the again next one is y1 double dash ok so y1 dash is not equal to y1 double dash in that case again for the y1 double dash y1 double dash will be the initial iteration and and value will be according to this so these are the basic process for Stodola method hope you will understand these are the five steps of the Stodola method if you like this video please do share with your friends thank you